Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. Today, me, Brian Mitchell, will be sharing my experience with Fog of World with Ian Arbuck. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO12. So, I published a blog post yesterday on my site, brianm.me.post slash fog dash of dash world dash two, if you're interested, where I discuss um, both my experiences with Fog of World and then a review of the recently released Fog of World 2. So to begin with this, I just want to kind of explain the premise of the app before I go into kind of why I like using it. So in video games, there's often the concept of fog of war, where you have a map that is unexplored and kind of covered in, in fog. And as you move around, you you see through the fog and you kind of fill out a map of where you've been. So you can see, you know, oh, I've just walked through this building. So I can see where, that's where the building is on a map. And so this is, and usually that the, that fog of war is kind of has two levels, right? There's the there's like the completely opaque fog where you haven't traveled yet and you have no idea what the terrain looks like, yep. and then there's the kind of um, in between where you can see what the terrain looks like, but you can't see what units are there because you don't currently have any. Yeah, units so in that within area. your line of sight. Yep. So fog of world is similar to that concept, except there's just you've been there or you haven't, so there's no like you can see units because you know it's just using a it's a layer over a map. So um, you basically can import um, GPS logger data or record on your phone where, where you've been and it can track as you go. And so it uses GPS to, to fill out and um, open up the fog of places that you've been. So I find it quite interesting to see where I've been and just to take different routes to see new, new areas of the city and mostly just you know fill out the map on it to get another levels and increase my exploration of the world. Mm-hmm. Working towards the the impossible uh, king of the world achievement where you've explored 1% of the earth by land area or no wow. by surface area, I think, which is, sounds pretty unachievable. I'm at 0.00005% of the world. This is going to be a lifetime achievement, honestly. Yeah, I, I hope I can use this app for all of my life. I don't know. Probably not. We'll see. <laughs> so um, I was introduced to this app during the summer of 2000 or during the spring semester of 2014 when I was in Morris. I lived in Morris that... Uh, following summer and I worked uh, downtown maybe three quarters of a mile away and I would bike to work in four or five minutes because I always wanted to give myself no time for transportation because I wanted to sleep in and you know oh yeah so then I would bike home on a different route so I would take you know start with going home on fourth street then do fifth street then sixth street seventh eighth ninth street and then I'd go back and you know, do third first third second first street and then I'd do the alleys between all those streets and then I would fill in the so those, those were the kind of east west streets and then I did the north south streets um, and then sometimes on weekends, I would go to the west side of town or some other neighborhood that wasn't convenient to go home with on at all and just bike around there for exercise and to explore new areas. So you mentioned that you did the alleys in between. How wide is the – like what's your radius of area that you get credit for? Yeah. So in Fog of War 1, the the display was a little different. I think a a path was i think there, there's some number somewhere maybe like 30 feet or something okay but or in in radius so maybe 60 feet wide i'm not quite sure mm-hmm. but i find it to be about the distance between the street and halfway between the street and the alley so it's okay or so it, it covers about you know halfway it covers the street and halfway to the alley where you would explore if you're on the alley mm-hmm. so if you fi- i find if you go down the street and the alley you can mostly get all the exploration there. Maybe there's a little, sl- a little uh, sliver of mm-hmm. unexplored territory between those two. So, and that depends on if you fog of war two, you can sh- you can set how thick you want your exploration path to be thin, medium, or thick. And I think I set mine to thick just so it looks like more has been explored. And sure. I think it's it's easier to see because especially on a high resolution display, it can be pretty thin paths. And so if it's a little wider, I could see better. Um, so I I've explored areas of where I've been. Um, where I've lived and especially in St. Paul this, this summer and last summer I would, you know, be working and I, I, with my Apple watch, it encourages me to, to do exercise and activity, calorie burning and, um, just being more, um, I guess healthy and movement. Mm -hmm. And so I would use that with fog of war. I'd be like, all right, well, I need to do 200 calories. I better go on a bike ride. So I would just look at my, bring bring my phone along and see, okay, where haven't I been? That's within a couple of miles of my house. I'll go bike there go up and down a few streets and then come back. Nice. And um, I've done that um, quite a lot this last summer, more, you know, in like July, August when it was warmer and, and June. 
Um, I've done that a little bit lately, sometimes with walking as well. And so I've become, or St. Paul especially has just become a grid of up, down, left, left, right, kind of as just the streets and all the, the grids. In areas of St. Yeah. Paul where we actually have a grid, right? Yeah. We, we have some weird streets around here. Yeah, and so you can kind of see 8 Mill Road kind of like closing <laughs> me in because I'm like, eh, I don't feel like going across a bridge and going mm. way out of my way. Um, and then there's, I kind of have a few sections of St. Paul where I've gone through all the alleys as well. Mm-hmm. So the the kind of quadrant, as I like to call it, which is like a half mile half, by half mile block between the busier streets. Okay. So my, my local quadrant is between Hamlin and Snelling for a for the north south streets and mm-hmm. then um between St. Clair and Randolph for the east west street. Okay. And so I have gone up and down all the streets and the alleys in there. Um a lot of it was on foot because it's close by and I, you know, I don't listen to podcasts when I bike, so it's nice to listen to podcasts oh. and Fog of World and do some movement and then it's killing three birds with one stone. So, it's been a good um motivator for me. Um so that's kind of the um more exploration and then I'll take different routes when I'm driving home from somewhere. I might, you know, I don't have anywhere to be like, it's, you know, I don't have anything to do. I can spend five more minutes and take some random road. I've never been on before. Just, you know, take a look at the houses, see any, if it's getting holiday season, see any cool decorations or mm-hmm. I don't know anything interesting. And it's, it's fun to just kind of know the city a little better. I feel like I'm better at street names. I can, um, I just know just kind of the elevation is that cause I've biked through a lot of these. So I know, you know, Oh, it's kind of some hills over here, goes downhill a little bit there. And I find it quite fun. Um, and a lot of places that I've maybe been to, but years and years and years ago, I'm like, oh, I remember seeing this this house or building mm-hmm. like when I was a kid. And that's where it is. Okay, K- kind of connecting the dots for the city I'm in. It's kind of a shame that uh, there's no data from way back then in your life that yeah, you could import. Everything. <laughs> yeah, so I, I could import and drop paths in Google Maps. It can import... Oh. Um, uh, what is it called? Um, KML files? KML and um, GPX files. And so mm. those are, you can export those from loggers. And I know some developer has made an app that is, I think it's called um, Fog of World uh, Explorer or something. And you can like draw paths and then export that data and import it into Fog of World. Okay. So someone made an app just for that. That came out this summer. Um, I might try that out during Christmas just to kind of fill in, which I'll talk to you later. I have some paths that were um, dashed due to performance issues in Fog of War, War 1 and iOS 9. And so I can maybe go through. I know I've been Fill there. in the areas yeah, in between the dots. Yeah, just trace out the path again. Yeah. So um, for exploration, different routes. And I think a lot of my friends are kind of used to me, uh, you know, driving around like, we're going to go somewhere. Uh, why don't we uh, take a right here? And like, what is a tiny street? Just, just take a right here. You know, it's okay. Or they'll know I'm doing Fog World exploration and hopefully they're, they're down with it and we'll do that. So the funny thing is that uh, earlier this school year, you know, Pokemon Go was out and I was walking to and from work. Uh, and yeah, I would like take a different street for most of the, the way uh, occasionally to, to see if there were any like Pokemon that are always, you know, have nests there. Uh, I definitely yeah. think the Pokemon Pokemon Go was uh, a lot pretty similar to Fog of World in terms of my... Uh, desire to take different ra- different routes go to new parts of the city that I haven't been to before just to do they run at the same time okay i never played pokemon go oh okay sorry never mind then um, i was driving around with a friend yesterday and he he called me the um oh gosh i tweeted about it what was it i think uh where is it here twitter twitter it was like a fo- no he called me a fog patrol <laughs> for for navigating through the fog all the time um so on my on this this blog post, I have some screenshots of Morris and St. Paul and the whole St. Paul Minneapolis area just to see. Um, now that's kind of like where I'm living at the time, and then now there can be travel, so that's a little bit different. So you know, going to a new city, um, somewhere else where you haven't been before, it's all new, and so it's it's fun, especially with taking public transportation, whether you're on trams, buses, and trains, where you can be above ground and cover a lot of area. You can see kind of where the route is. You know, you might see something interesting as you're going into the city, and you can literally see on a map, oh, that's exactly where I was. And it's helpful to kind of see, okay, I was in maybe that neighborhood. Maybe tomorrow I don't want to see the same thing again, so let's go somewhere else, and you can see where you are. And then you can also wander and keep keep um, a record of where you were when you're just wandering. And so on the on my site I have Copenhagen, Denmark, where I lived for five months while I was studying abroad there, as well as Amsterdam, where I was there for four days, London, where I was for three days, Boston, which I was there for four days, and Chicago, where I've been off and on for, I don't know, probably a week of time over the last few years, week and a half, I'm not sure. 
And so it's it's inter- interesting to see where what kind of areas I cover in different trips. Mm-hmm. And then especially with Copenhagen, where I lived for five months, which is a pretty long period of time, I can I can see little offshoots and be like, what what was I doing there? And I can kind of look at the streets and be like, oh, that's right. You know, look at the building and remember what I did there. So it can help trigger memories for something that I did that I was maybe insignificant and not very important, but might be a fun memory or something interesting that I would like to remember. And so it's it's a lot of fun for for um, recalling stories and memories of things that I've done. And I've really appreciated that, especially for Denmark, because I've I, I had it with me the entire time I was in the country th- during this trip. So what you were saying um, made me think about Google's location history that it you know passively is always getting from my phone, um, oh. and and I was wondering like okay so can it is a is Fog of War World uh, available on Android? Uh, they've they've been saying they have plans to for quite a while. They I've seen nothing on it. Okay, I think uh, they would like to, but I don't know if they'll actually develop it or not. Right, because um, my for my first thought was like. Could it just draw from my location history automatically? Um, if you I, could export that information, yes, I, I can manually export it. Yeah. Um, is it like day by day or something? I'm not sure. I'm looking at it. I, export all. I I I can find easily how to export this day, um, and I'm not. Uh, so the thing about like Google history way. is you have uh, time timestamp information as well. Mm-hmm. Blog of World is strictly just location. It's just storing location data it's doing nothing with time which i think would be interesting and um so fog of world one was released sometime in 2012 and fog of world two came out just uh last week mm-hmm. so there was a period of four years between development and fog of world one didn't see a single update from 2014 on wow so its performance on it was designed you know with ios 6 in mind i believe so it kind of had the um, skeuomorphic design with lots of textures. And oh, yeah, things. yeah. And so, you know, it, it was finally designed app back in the day, but it was showing age. It wasn't iPhone 6 optimized for its screen resolution, and it had horrible performance, especially on iOS 9. Um, so bad that if you were in a car going faster than maybe 30 miles an hour, it would you would be moving faster than it could keep up. So it would <laughs> it would it would take the information and kind of remember it, and then it would have to save it to its database or something, and it would process that on probably the same thread so it couldn't track at the same time so then it would save it and you'd, so you'd have mm. you'd have like a say like an inch of exploration and then you have like a quarter inch of, of a gap and then an inch and then a quarter inch and that was true for 40 miles an hour 60 miles an hour or in a plane going 500 miles an hour right so you only the difference is you'd have like half mile stretch recorded and then like a 16th of a mile of nothing and or something like that and so uh, i do see lots of trips where there are dashes of where the path was now, there were ways to get around this. Um, performance was a little better if you had the phone um, as the frontmost application with the screen mm. on. Mm-hmm. So I would sometimes turn on uh, sleep or turn disable um, display sleep, which, of course, uses more power, uh, which further is further annoys me because especially my iPhone 6 was just its battery was complete crap, probably because I was tracking all the time when I was in Denmark with Fog of War. Fog of World, sorry. And so I, then I would begin to have two phones. So I used my iPhone 5, which was always just with Fog of World. It, it didn't have a you know, cellular connection. It just had an AT&T SIM card that wasn't connected because it wasn't activated. Mm-hmm. But its GPS still worked. So it was good for tracking. And then that would just be my backpack all day. And this is true dedication, everybody. If I was going somewhere new. Now, it, you know, for maybe two, three weeks in Denmark, I had it with me all the time. And then I um, maintained a normal schedule. And I just did the same paths to getting biking or taking the metro to and from school. If I was going somewhere new, I would consciously remember to put it on. And I would bring my old iPhone 5 with me, but I wouldn't necessarily record all the time mm-hmm. just to, to save a battery because it would last, you know, maybe two days if I didn't record it, eh, maybe a day. I would charge it every night pretty much because I generally would go somewhere new, take a different path back to the train station, but I would only turn it on for that. Actually, I think I did something similar to that when my family went to Yellowstone because I had a 7-inch tablet, um, the Nexus 7 at the time. And that thing's battery, like when you know when its screen was off, for just lasted for a really really long time. So if we were going on like a hike around, you know, up to some peak and then back down, uh, I would uh, turn on. Uh, I think it was called MyTracks, the uh, whatever the Google provided app was, and uh, and record that just for that for that trek because that was like kind of a cool thing. Yeah, I I didn't have it on like all day. <laughs> yeah. And now I think there is an achievement in Fogger World 2 where you, if you have it on for 80 consecutive days straight, it'll give you some achievement. But I'm like, that's too much dedication. I don't like 
like continuous the yeah. entire I think so. From what I I was I haven't looked at all the badges cuz there are I think 65 of them, so there's quite a lot, but mm-hmm. um so when I got my iPhone 7, I my uh used my iPhone 6 as my backup one with a battery case that I bought earlier this summer for my iPhone 6. Mostly while I worked at the summer camp where I couldn't charge it very much throughout the day. Um now Fogger World 2 does not work on 32-bit devi- devices, so mm. the iPhone 5 is not compatible. Oh well. But I you have, my have six. Yeah, so you have okay. two two sixty four bit ones now anyway. Right? Yeah. So um I would yeah, so with the trade offs and track hacking as I call it, the section on my post for having two phones and keeping the screen on in the frontmost for Fog of World One on iOS nine. I think iOS ten actually Im- increased the performance of Fog of World One. Hmm. I think it was some system thing in iOS nine that was less efficient with the app. I'm not really sure too much because I think iOS eight it was okay. Because I just remember when I went to Denmark at the very beginning, it was it was okay. It worked fine. It, it could be recording and the screen off in my pocket. And it would record everything. Once iOS 9 came out, though, it started having issues. And that was a disappointment. I had not known that, I would have not put my iPhone 5 on iOS 9. But It's funny you say that because uh, while I was in Sweden, uh, what version of Android came out? The one that introduced material design. And uh, gosh, there was some serious memory leaks there. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. And of course, I probably put the the public beta uh, of the device of the iOS version on my devices, so I'd been used to it for a little while, and like, ooh, I'm gonna get the new flashy stuff, and then, oops, maybe not good idea. But so, um, if it was recording on iOS nine with the display off, even if the app was frontmost facing, it would probably do about it would do about the same distance of on off on off because mm-hmm. I think iOS dedicates less power to an application if it's in the background. Right. So, Fog of World two. That's kind of the first part there, how I kind of use the application. But Fog of World 2 um, redesigns the application to follow the flat designs introduced with um, iOS 7, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the map is, um, the map screen is kind of redesigned. You can you can do um, different detail when you're panning and zooming the map around. So you can, if you have the current location, you can have the 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 phone center your location as you're exploring so you can kind of view where you're going where you're going oh yeah um high detail or high quality keeps the the kind of the the fade of the fog so kind of it's not like a hard edge of the fog mm. from it kind of it, it is kind of a fog not just a translucent white layer so the the efficiency level is a translucent white layer when it's somewhere you haven't explored and completely clear if you have explored there so the high quality is is like that but it's kind of a fog little cloud cloud-like so you know not completely one opacity between you know looks like fog and it kind of fades off um so that takes more to render and then the the battery saver mode uh has no fog when it is moving and when it when you're not moving it renders the normal high quality so i generally am in efficiency mode because i think it's a little i almost prefer look at efficient in efficiency mode as uh, i'm moving around because it's a little easier to see edges and things I did attach images, kind of comparing them, but they probably aren't zoomed in quite enough to really tell. But uh, Another screen on there is Passport. This just kind of shows your level, your number of badges, little profile screen, um, number of... Er. Now, I, I do have something to ask here, because um, this is you know showing like the, the amount of progress that you've made and stuff, and obviously that, that kind of ties into the badges and stuff. Um, is is there any like community? Is there comparisons between you and other people? Are there like rankings and stuff? No, there is none of that. I think okay. there is game center integration on Fog of hmm. World One and Two. There's you know it's tied into Game Center. Now with iOS ten, there's no Game Center app anymore, so you can't see all this. And there's no there's no UI within the app to pull up the Game Center stats. That was pushed. And Apple said, okay, apps need to at least add a button to load the Game Center interface. Huh. Uh, their apps, and this is not showing up. I'm hopeful that there'll be something because I think that's where you can kind of compare who has explored a lot. Yeah, but because my my concern is that like if it's if it's like serious uh, comparison stuff and and achievements and and um, leaderboards, uh, then ideally they would lock down some of the other nicer features where you can like draw in and you know import stuff because uh, then it would be very very easy to lie and cheat. Yeah, and I. Yeah, that's a good point. And how I use this app is mostly just for myself. Right. I'm yeah. not really comparing with others. I only had one friend, the one who told me about this. I don't think he uses it anymore. Um, but he told me about it. We compared once or twice early on, but he was a higher level than me at the time. And so there really wasn't, I don't know. It's just, you know, it's each other's own thing. If you're in a different city, it's hard to compare because each city is different. Right. It's more right. fun to compare your 
close friends who live close by who go through the similar areas. And so mm -hmm. I just don't think it's quite, it's more of an individual application. And these badges will show you progress of a number of territories explored in each region. Now badges are, or achievements, I think are linked up through Game Center. And this is if you've reached a certain, a certain threshold. So there's things like explore all the countries in Scandinavia, ex see all the countries in the EU, go to 10 um, uh, kingdoms or monarchies in the world, okay. go to cross the Arctic Circle, Antarctic Circle, Equator, tro the Tropic of Cancer and Capricorn, um, travel to North and South America, go to Asia, go, so, you know, there's one to go to every, go to each continent, go to every continent. So just some, some achievements for exploring these areas, you know, travel, um, get to level 50, 100, 250, 500, 1,000, get to level 100 over the sea or explore 100 square kilometers over the sea, things like that. Mm -hmm. So just some, some cool tasks and things to do over certain areas of the world. And then there's an import section where you can import uh, GPX or KML files. You can import them from iTunes file sharing, which is where you can just drop a file from your computer onto the phone over USB using iTunes. You can use iCloud Drive or you can use Dropbox. Um, this is intended for GPX or GPS loggers or, um, I guess, things you can plot out um, these paths. Then there's Sync, which is kind of like a sync and backup. So you can backup to Dropbox or new in Foggle World 2 iCloud Drive. So this um, there's auto, also an auto sync where it kind of picks some random time in the day to um, just oh, yeah. run a sync. Um, so it basically just copies the, I'm assuming, the uh, representation of the database inside the app to to whatever account. Now I have. Explored... Would they be able to do that f through Game Center? Uh, no, Game Center does not let you store files. Oh, okay. Um, so on my Fog of World um, backup, it is no, that's backup sync. I have 3.7 megabytes for my um, like 257 square kilometers. So 3.7 megabytes of 616 files, and every time it syncs, it, ad it adds a file called like. FOW, Fog of World, um, sync lock. So it just adds a lock file, so you can't sync more than one at a time. And then it just goes through this and indexes it. Um, and so it just it's just backing up a shared um, backup from right. one of your devices. So you right. can explore on one device, sync backup, and then you have to sync backup on another device. So you need to kind of like sync hop back and forth to compare multiple data from different devices. So you want, you, you want to make sure that you don't explore on one device and then explore on like your main device before you no, it, import it'll, that other no, stuff? No, it'll, it'll merge them all together. Okay, But, cool. you know, if you... So if I'm my iPhone 6 and my iPhone 7 and I explore two different areas on both and I sync my iPhone 6 to it, mm -hmm. great, now that's in there. Then I sync my iPhone 7 to it, then my iPhone 7 is all up to date, but I have to sync my iPhone 6 again to get the iPhone 7. Right, okay, So you just yeah. have to go back and forth a little bit. But that's fine. And um, So I sync in both Dropbox and Fog of World just to have backup and redundancy. You know, why not? Earlier in the beta, there were some issues with iCloud Drive especially, but those seem to have been uh, completely fixed and dekinked. Um, settings, you can change a lot of stuff. So you can link, manage linked accounts. This is, um, you know, Dropbox, I believe Game Center, Facebook, and Twitter. So there's a little um, camera button on your main map screen where you can share what mm -hmm. the visible portion of the map is, and you can share in line to Facebook and Twitter. Now, I'd, I would imagine, I would think they could just use the built-in share sheet, but I, I guess not. Uh, and that matches the similar um, feature in Fog of World 1. So other settings, you can choose between Apple Maps as the map um, service or Google Maps. You can choose satellite, standard, or a hybrid view. Um, you can do a dark or light fog style, so that's a black or a white. I prefer mm -hmm. the hybrid view, so it's kind of viewing the satellite view with drawing the roads on with a white fog. I know many other people, I think, prefer standard with black fog as kind of the, the opposite of that. Um, and then you can um, draw the fog as normal or, or thick, um, and then you can do a, a thin, medium, or thick exploration track. And of course, the fog rendering quality can be adjusted in the settings as well. So improvements compared to version 1, mostly it's optimization in speed the re and the redesign, um, and I guess the tweaking of panning around. So I have my iPad Mini 2, which is from 2013. It has... What CPU did the iPhone 5S have? I think it's the same gener I don't know. It's, it's you people who memorize CPUs on phones. It's the it's the A something, the sixty four bit iPad Mini from twenty thirteen. It on high quality gets like two frames per second because it is <laughs> working so hard to re render an entire screen of fog data. So that you really have to turn on to uh, um, efficiency mode or even um, battery saver mode where it mm. doesn't run out of the fog. Then it 
it's better performing. But even the Apple Maps app has some issue with with drawing at 60 frames per second on that device. Just it's just slower. Um, and so on towards the end of my post here, I show some examples of um, the the dashed exploration path as well as some inaccurate kind of dual paths when I'm recording with two iPhones. Mm. Um, I found that it wasn't quite as accurate on a phone that didn't have a cellular connection at the same time. I don't know mm. if this means anything. It might just be a device. I, it might just be like poor performance on an iPhone 5 versus iPhone 6. I'm not too sure. So you never popped out your SIM card and put it in the old phone to, to see if... <laughs> no, I didn't. Sometimes I would um, do um, create a personal hotspot just to load map data so I could see where I'm going on my offline device because it kind of mm-hmm. caches. So if I, um, especially when I'm going on trips in new cities in Europe, I would um, take my, my old iPhone with the fog of world and just kind of zoom around the city and load at least from a little out portion. I wouldn't zoom in all the way all the time because it would take forever to pan around everywhere. Mm-hmm. Just to load some of it in memory so mm-hmm. I could I could pull out and say... You know, we need to go back home. Let's take this different route to this to the different subway station that will get us home too. That's a little different. Just it's nice having it all on that device, um, so I can just kind of see what we're doing. Um, but then there's the inaccurate path where it kind of jumps off the road here with the one, and it kind of jumps back on. And especially when when flying in a plane, I would often have two devices because it's the of the poor performance. And so there's some times where it's you know, a lot faster in a, in a plane. So I think that sometimes it doesn't get signal from a certain GPS for a, you know, a second or two. So your, your dot will just jump in like a straight line out of the way that you're going in like the same direction you were going if you're turning or something. And it just kind of like, mm. and then it, and then it just jumps right back. And so it looks just kind of jagged and interesting, but yeah. And then I finished it up here with a photo of the, all my exploration that I've done. So from about the Midwest through, um, the parts of Europe that I've been, including the arc over, Canada, Greenland, and Iceland. So I, I love that uh, the second to last picture that you have in there has this uh, one particular trip that you took up 3rd Street and then made a box over there in Dayton's Bluff. I, I believe that that's uh, where I live. Yeah, you would be exactly right. <laughs> yeah. When you came up there to take pictures of your iPhone 7. I did, yeah. Good time. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much covers Fog of World 2. I think there are some comparable apps on the Android store or google play store um in the since fog world didn't get any updates i think someone else released a new version this summer for ios that oh. had similar or even more features than this um but i'm gonna stick with fog world because i already have all of this data in there and there's no real export unless oh. an app that i'm using can import fog world sync data which i don't they've published nothing about it oh yeah so I'm, I'm not sure how they do it it seems like they do blocks and they can sync um a block of area per file so um, I at one point was having some, some issues with um, not every all the data being synced. So I would rebuild the database, which kind of re-indexes the whole thing. Or I would just delete the app and re-download, re-sync to Dropbox. And it would download it all. And that would take a long time. That does to sound download, like doing a lot. To download all of the data. And I did this on my iPad. It took like an hour or two because it was a lot of data. And it would have to then render it all in to its internal format. And that took a long time. And I would kind of, I could pause or stop it in mid-sync. And I just like, especially my, my flight to Europe would be like there'd be a dash over a part of Canada and then a pause and it would start up again over Greenland. So it would clearly like do by boxes mm-hmm. of, of the data. So that's how I kind of understand Brian, it. Brian, you are more dedicated to this than most people are to any one thing in their life. This is incredible. This has uh, been a non-small part of my life for the last <laughs> three, two and a half years. Oh, man. Hopefully it doesn't show too much. <laughs> no, it actually. It probably does right now for you. But... Oh, for sure. <laughs> But I mean, like it, it, yeah, it hasn't like taken over conversations that we've had before. No. Well, you haven't driven in a car with me either. That's so. true. That's true. I haven't turned the wrong way on Fairview yet with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice when I'm driving with a friend who is willing to do this, and I'm the passenger because I can just like go full navigator. Mm-hmm. Where when mm-hmm. I'm driving, I kind of have to like stop, pull over, pull up my phone, look at it, and then like, all right, I'm gonna go here. I can't like, I can only plan out so far in ahead mm-hmm. in my memory. Like, get turn right here, go two blocks, turn left, like. It gets to be a little much. That's pretty awesome. And I haven't known to bike, pull over to the side of the road, or if it's there's no traffic and I'm going slow, I might bike and look at my phone. Shh. Definitely did not do that on my way over here today. <laughs> awesome. So that's Fargo World Two. You can find it on the App Store. It's uh, I'll put a link in the show notes, and it is four ninety nine. They have not increased the price at all since version one. So this update was a free update mm. or complete redesign. And I hope it'll last for a year to come. Any thoughts from you guys? 
I asked all the questions I had. Yeah. All right, well, this has been another second opinion. You can find me, by the way, on the website at brianm.me or on Twitter at underscore Brian Mitchell underscore. If you have any questions or comments about this, um, you can also comment on my blog post if you have anything more directly you yes. the conversation there. The blog post that actually has a comment section. It does. Mm-hmm. Good old discus. Uh, I'm Ian Arbuck. You can find me uh, on Twitter at Ian, Ian Arbuck. And my website is ianarbuck.com. And we are The Nexus. So if you want to uh, contact us on Twitter, we are at The Nexus TV. Uh, and if you want to leave any feedback uh, through our website, you can do that by going to the show notes. Once again, that is thenexus.tv slash SO12. Uh, you can click on the contact button underneath our faces. And yeah, if you have any anything to say about this particular episode, go ahead and do that. Um, and it, Or if you want to tell us you know, what we can review in the future, or if you have something that you want to come and be a guest on to review. Uh, We would love to have you. With that, have a good one.